Hello, everyone, and thank you for being there uh, with us at the AIMA Consensus and uh, 101 Ethereum 2.0 with Benjamin Lavergne and, the block, and on the blockchain at HEC Zoom. I'm David Service and I'm the founder and president of Blockchain at HEC, which was created in 2017 to share knowledge on the Web3 economy and to connect ecosystems. So first of all, I'd like to thank uh, our partners, HEC Alumni, HEC Paris, and all the 70 speakers and companies who have already come to share with us their knowledge about the new world of Web3 which is uh, growing today exponentially. So I remind you that we have one or two conferences a month, per month. So the next one will be uh, with blockchain experts with St Stanislas de Quenotin on the, on the 19th of April uh, with the crypto market debrief. So to come back to today's topic, we are very happy to welcome Benjamin, Benjamin Lavergne, ex-Google in charge today of partnership at Consensus. So to briefly recap the promising context for Consensus, few figures first. So $450 million raised, 30 million monthly uh, active MetaMask users, uh, 430,000 Infura uh, users, and clearly the paradigm shift is happening. So Benjamin will, will, will uh, uh, present, I mean, will present consensus and notably uh, Ethereum 2.0. Uh, and we'll have actually two blocks of 30 minutes, 30 minutes of presentation and 30 minutes of questions uh, and answer Q&A. And to briefly introduce our host, so Benjamin is a partner program manager at Consensus. He's actually market leading blockchain technology company. And prior to that, Benjamin graduated uh, ESCP. He worked for three years at Google in sales and partnerships, and also had several experiences in entrepreneurship and consulting. So Ben speaks Spanish, English, Portuguese, and has been involved in the blockchain space since 2017, with one year experience in, at CoinHouse, formerly La Maison du Bitcoin, is deeply passionate about Web3, especially uh, decentralized finance, DeFi. And yeah, Benjamin, thank you again for your presence among us and your time. And the floor is yours. Thank, thank you. you very much, uh, David, for the invitation. <clears throat> Quite excited to be here. Uh, and, and thanks to uh, all the participants for, for being here. So we have a, we have a packed agenda today. Uh, so I'm going to, as David said, I'm going to talk about consensus, briefly introducing the company, and then we'll talk about Ethereum and Ethereum 2.0 more specifically. So let's get started. So the agenda for today uh, about consensus, what is Ethereum, and then Ethereum 2.0 overview and narrative. So uh, first, let's talk about uh, consensus briefly. So we are a global blockchain company. We started in 2015. We are a software product company uh, that enables developers to build next generation applications. Uh, we enable also enterprise to launch modern financial and trade infrastructure. And we also enable uh, the people across the world uh, to access the decentralized finance. In terms of our products, uh, you probably know MetaMask, which is uh, the, I think, most renowned non-custodial wallet uh, out there with uh, 30 plus million active users. But we also have uh, Infura and uh, Truffle, those type of products that uh, really are targeted towards developers. So if we look at what we do specifically and the narrative around the company, uh, consensus products drive a flywheel uh, of ecosystem activity that is accelerating the emergence of the Internet of Value, which is happening largely around Ethereum uh, and Ethereum mainnet and other Ethereum-like technologies. As I said, developers are using our tools uh, to test, deploy, build, and operate decentralized applications, either onto Ethereum mainnet or uh, quorum-based or enterprise Ethereum private networks. And also, of course, developers are also using MetaMask as a wallet to empower their users to confirm each new transaction in their decentralized apps. On the other hand, uh, the end user uses MetaMask or MetaMask Institutional uh, as the user interface to interact and interact with dApps and protocols on the Internet of Value. So we are trusted by governments and companies across several industries. All those logos you probably know. Uh, it's it's very diverse, as you can see. 
Uh, we are working with Banque de France, uh, AWS, uh, uh, nonprofits like uh, WWF, uh, and, and many other players in different industries. Uh, as a product and platform company, our blockchain stack enables developers to create smart contracts, test them, audit them with Truffle Intelligence. Uh, I talked about Insura, which is a node as a service uh, product, which is used by uh, 450,000 developers uh, out there on the decentralized web. Talked about MetaMask, of course, and, and Quorum, which is a uh, client enterprise uh, solution for Ethereum. If you put it all together, uh, we have created a full stack uh, product suite for the wallet layer, smart contract coding, auditing, and management. We have applications um, and middleware as well with Codify Arcochets. And finally, a blockchain layer for both permission network, public network, and bridging across them. Uh, so that's why uh, we think that consensus has everything you need to uh, go out there and build on a decentralized web or the Web3. And this slide finally is a little bit updated uh, since we have raised, uh, as, a, as David said, uh, 450 million uh, a few weeks ago. But uh, dating back from November, uh, we, have, we had raised 200 million as well. Uh, so yeah, we are uh, accelerating in that, in that regard. So that was about consensus. Um, now let's talk a little bit about uh, Ethereum. I'm sure all of you are, are familiar with Ethereum, but um, I'm just going to make a quick reminder of what is Ethereum and how it all gets started. So first about blockchain, I'm not going to spend too much time here since I'm sure you're familiar with it, but the, the way I like to define blockchain is, is the following. Uh, blockchain makes it possible to store and exchange all kinds of data or values between two parties in a secure and transparent way without having to involve what is called a trusted third party. The key features of blockchains are decentralization, transparency, and usability. Now, if we take a look at Ethereum specifically, uh, these are the four main founders. So Vitalik Buterin is the public figure that you all know uh, that, that founded Ethereum. We also have Gavin Wood, which is the current co-founder of Polkadot. Uh, we also have Joe Lubin, which is the co-founder of Consensus, and then Jeffrey Wilk. There are other founders, but these are the main four. Speaking of the history of, the, of Ethereum and a little bit about the time frame, so Ethereum was announced in 2013. It was launched between 2015 and 2016. Then we also have the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, which was launched in 2017. It's a member-led industry organization whose objective is to uh, drive the use of Enterprise Ethereum uh, across all industries and enterprise. And in the upper part of this slide, you can see all the uh, client solution dedicated to enterprise use cases for Ethereum. Pegasus Pantheon and the, the, the current version is called Quorum and Besu, which I told you about in, in the part about consensus. So speaking of Ethereum, uh, you maybe you are familiar with this concept, this concept of smart contracts. So what are smart contracts? They are programmable, con con programmable contracts, sorry, uh, which are written into the blockchain. Uh, they have interesting features. Uh, first is they are trustless. No third parties or intermediaries are necessary. They are trackable because they are, they are living onto the blockchain. So you, you can see uh, what's inside of them. They are irreversible. Transactions are final and you cannot reverse it. Um, same as if you send a Bitcoin to someone and you make a, a mistake in the address, you can't <laughs> you can give back your, you can get back your, your Bitcoin. So be careful with that. Uh, and they are self-executing, meaning um, if the condition for the program is being met, then the program is going to be uh, unleashed. So if you, if you compare a smart contract with traditional contracts, uh, there are many advantages, I think. Uh, of course, there are still caveats to this, but uh, traditional contracts are executed in days uh, while smart contracts are executed in minutes. They are less expensive, uh, I would say. Uh, 
not near zero. This site says near zero, but you still have to pay a developer to write the smart contract. So it can be expensive, but uh, more scalable, I would say. Um, and potentially no lawyer is necessary. Um, so smart contract have a lot of uh, interesting key features. And, and given the fact that all business logics can be written into smart contracts. So I have a I have a video that uh, I, I wanted to share. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's it's taking a, a bit too long for for me to show that. So uh, if, if you want, if you want uh, maybe Benjamin, we can uh, we can have a try with Eric. Uh, okay. Okay. Eric, uh, do you mind uh, playing it? Lance that tout de suite, Vincent. Merci beaucoup. Okay. So this this video just. Uh, in the meantime, uh, this video is like the, it dates back to 2015, 2016, I guess. And it's Vitalik Buterin explaining the vision that he has for Ethereum. So it's very interesting to see because it's like six years old and it's uh, the vision of the entrepreneur. Okay, ready. Thanks to the power of modern communication, we have the ability to create technologies that are decentralized, removing middlemen and allowing users to interact with each other directly through a global network. Decentralized applications have been becoming more and more important in the past 10 years and have the benefits of massively reducing costs and barriers to entry, removing single points of failure, preventing censorship, and ensuring transparency and trust between all the parties involved in an interaction. BitTorrent, a file sharing network developed in the early 2000s, is arguably the first decentralized application to have been created. BitTorrent allows anyone to share any kind of file with anyone else in the world, allowing people to distribute content quickly and easily, even if they do not have the resources to pay for their own website or server. Five years later, Satoshi Nakamoto came up with the idea of a blockchain, a sort of distributed database, and used it to build Bitcoin, the world's first decentralized currency. Decentralized currencies like Bitcoin allow people to send money instantly anywhere around the world with no regard for national borders with negligible fees. Bitcoin is increasingly being used for international remittances, micropayments, and commerce online. Uh, decentralized applications for finance, uh, cloud computing, mes messaging, and distributed governance are soon to come. Ethereum is a platform that is specifically designed for people to build these kinds of decentralized applications, or dApps for short. The Ethereum client, which we are calling the Ether browser, will include a built-in peer-to-peer network for sending messages and a generalized blockchain with a built-in programming language, allowing people to use the blockchain for any kind of decentralized application that they want to create. Ethereum can be used to build financial applications that are fully trustworthy and transparent because they run on the blockchain. Online, cryptographically secure systems for managing your property and contracts. Social networking and messaging systems that allow users to maintain control of their own data. Systems for trading underutilized computational resources like CPU time and hard drive space. And eventually tools for online voting and distributed governance. And the most exciting applications of Ethereum are probably the ones that we have not even thought of. As with all new platforms for innovation, like the protocols that underlie the internet itself, it is not always easy to predict what they're going to be used for. Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the modern Thank internet you, as a whole video, are yeah. all a result of uh, early... Yeah, I, I wanted to, uh, to end on that spe specific sentence. Um... Vitalik saying that the the application running on Ethereum are probably the ones that we don't know about. Uh, why I think it's interesting because it was the idea, the original idea of uh, of, of Vitalik um, that Ethereum is built for for everything and anything. Can you see my screen, uh, David? I can't hear you, but yeah. in fact, yeah? we, we see you, but not your screen. Maybe let me check. Ah. Maybe. Okay, okay. Maybe. Okay, let me let me go back. Yes. Is that, yes, is that okay now? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Just gonna rerun that. Okay. 
Yes, super. So yeah, we were there. So um, so Ethereum is is built around this idea of decentralization. Um, decentralization is interesting, uh, especially because you will answer yes to the above question in this slide, in new slides. And if you want to build an application or build something uh, that is decentralized, then you should be answering yes to at least one of those questions. If you're not uh, saying yes to one of those questions, then maybe there is no need for you to build something that is decentralized. Um, so the key features for decentralization, key benefits, I would say, would be the inclusivity, the robustness, the censorship, and the equality aspects of it. So if we take a look at the digital economy, uh, it's been added towards decentralization increasingly over the past 20 years, I'd say. Uh, so like 20 years ago, we will, uh, we've seen the emergence of the platform economy with Facebook, especially, and social networks. Um, in, in the 2010s, we've seen the sharing economy with Uber and, and, and Airbnb specifically. And for the past like six or seven years, a bit more, we've seen the emergence of the peer-to-peer -peer economy uh, built around blockchain, uh, of course, and Bitcoin, Ethereum. For the last... Uh, Two years, I would say, we have seen the emergence of this Web3 uh, phenomenon. Um, we've, we've been hearing this uh, in, in all places. Uh, I think to understand properly Web3, we need to define first what is Web1, what is Web2. Web1 is what I like to say, it's read. So you interact only with static uh, content, uh, static website. Web2 is read and write. So you are interacting with uh, social networks, e-commerce websites, um, and, and, and so on. So uh, the, the first example is Facebook, uh, Twitter, for instance. You can publish content. Uh, but still, it's a sil siloed uh, world gardens ecosystem. And Web3 is read, write, and own. And this uh, ownership aspect is really what has been uh, used uh, Ethereum for. Uh, especially with decentralized storage and uh, non-custodial wallets such as MetaMask. So we, if, we, if we zoom on, on the decentralized web uh, and the decentralized application and decentralization in general, uh, all roads uh, lead to Ethereum. Uh, so with some examples, the, the sales of NFTs have been reaching all time highs on the Ethereum network. We have seen an amazing growth of daily active users um, with uh, 280 compound annual growth rate since uh, its uh, emergence. And of course, the total value locked in uh, decentralized finance applications. So even though public networks give powers back to the individual, we, we believe it's, it's a pure shift to public uh, will take some time. That's why we have what we call permission networks. Uh, which are often referred to as consortium built on blockchains. Um, so when would you want to go permissioned? Well, uh, it assumes some level of institutional trust for the parties to be running the network. Uh, there is likely some networks governance as well uh, to be documented and agreement between the parties. Um, so this is a decision that needs to be taken care uh, between all the parties, and this is a time-consuming process, but can be useful, especially in the use cases of, of consortium. And I will go through examples uh, in, in slides afterwards. So if you, if you look at the use cases and the strategic opportunities for Ethereum, uh, the demand in, in 2018, 2020, was very oriented towards private permission blockchains uh, around global trade, asset management, institutional capital markets. Uh, nowadays, we've seen the demand grow for uh, decentralized finance, uh, central bank digital currencies, and also uh, payments, blockchain enabled payments. So working with banks for them to interact in their system with blockchain uh, ecosystems. So in terms of if we, if we look at the industry overview and the, and the different industries that can be impacted or are already impacted by blockchain technologies, of course, there are banking, finance, insurance use cases uh, with the uh, examples that you can see here on the screen. 
I think the supply chain uh, is also an interesting uh, use case, uh, especially the commodities trade, but you also have um, uh, use cases uh, on, on the authentic, authenticity of goods, sorry. You may have seen Carrefour, uh, Auchan and, and the likes that have been uh, making blockchain use cases for the authenticity of their or some of their products. Um, we also have uh, use cases in the healthcare industry, especially with medical records, uh, in the identity and, and retail also with loyalty rewards. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the product that Casino uh, has done with Lug, uh, making a uh, Euro stablecoin, but the, uh, the vision that they have is to have a low, loyalty reward system across different retail players um, and using, using, of course, the blockchain. And of course, we have great media, gaming, and enter entertainment use cases. I'm sure you're familiar with Sora, uh, but, uh, and, and of course, blockchain gaming. Uh, so yeah, the use cases are, are, are pretty, pretty uh, wide, I would say. It's not limited to uh, finance. So I'm just going to zoom on, on three specific use cases. I'm not, I'm, I was not involved in those projects, so don't ask uh, too many precise questions, please. But yeah, I'll try to go through these um, and, and various use cases. So the first one is uh, Hublot that wanted to deliver an NFT campaign from end to end for their uh, Euro 2020 uh, watch edition. So what they wanted to do actually was to target a younger audience. They wanted to attach a virtual good, a virtual product to a physical product. Uh, so what Consensus did is we designed the smart contracts, we did the NFT allocation, and we built the storefront with which the users could interact to uh, regain this uh, NFT. The benefits of this use case are first proving product ownership with a virtual product uh, ownership. The second benefits is for the, the end user to have an opportunity for resale on third party marketplace. And of course, the ultimate benefit is to, as I said, target a younger audience, uh, who are, who, audience which is very oriented towards uh, technology and, and especially blockchain. Second use case, I think, which is interesting because I talked about consortium, and this is one example. Uh, so Aura is a consortium built with luxury partners. So the ones that are involved are LVMH, Prada, and Richemont, uh, to name a few of them. And this uh, blockchain, this permission blockchain consortium is built specifically for product tracking and, tra and tracing uh, based on Ethereum blockchain. Again, the business problem here is uh, users want more transparency in same example as for Carrefour, for instance, but here it's on the luxury side. Uh, they want more transparency. Uh, the luxury players, they want to be closer to their customers and also they want to avoid fraud and counterfeiting of their products. And so that's why they're using blockchain, blockchain technology to prove that and avoid uh, counterfeiting. So Aura is, is a big use case. And I think this consortium is growing. It's not limited to uh, the players I mentioned. They are, growing, they are growing in size. So this is a very promising use case, I think, in this industry. And uh, the, the last example, so it's a financial example. So it's about the central bank cross-border payment network. Actually, this example is not live. So it's a, it's a MVP, it's a pilot. Um, but what did those players wanted to do? So there are 18 banks, I think. Um, and so they tried to avoid the operational complexity, possible bottlenecks and duplication, for example, regarding know your customer processes. So what they did is they used a blockchain technology to avoid that and to have significantly, sorry, increase speed, lower the cost, and provide operational efficiencies and resiliency to cross-border payments. This is still a pilot. Uh, why? It's probably because uh, of the regulation and the compliance, which are slowing things down in the financial industry. So that was uh, that was uh, about Ethereum. Sorry, maybe that was a bit long. Um, 
everything everyone's still alive yeah okay yeah uh, okay. maybe if we have uh, if you have any questions uh, just uh, uh, don't hesitate to ask it on the on the chat in the chat and I will we will actually ask them uh, in the q a so uh, just just as a reminder yeah you can go on if you want yeah all right okay so let's talk about uh, ethereum 2.0 um, now now so as I mentioned, the Ethereum blockchain has seen uh, an incredible uh, growth. And the, the, some questions have been arising uh, about the sustainability, security, and scalability of this network. And that's why uh, Consensus and Ethereum worked on a uh, fix for the network uh, to make it more scalable and usable for the end user. Um, Its, its usage has been all time high. Um, it's a, it has been live for the past six years and the high demand uh, has led to high network utilization, um, which means more expensive gas fees for transactions. And the also the, incre the increase in price of the underlying asset, Ethereum, which is, which is used for gas fees, also adds to the price conversion, meaning gas fees are more expensive. So for instance, if you want to make a transaction uh, these days on Ethereum, you're going to pay roughly $50, which is difficult to accept for a technology that is supposed to uh, lower the cost of financial transactions, right? So we really need a fix to the network. And that's why um, the high level goals of Ethereum 2.0 are the following. First, the sustainability narrative. Why? Because Ethereum is still using the proof of work mechanism, and you're probably familiar with this, but it means mining and then this energy consumption. And so in the media, everyone is talking about, uh, everyone is talking about this, uh, that uh, it's, it, it doesn't make any sense uh, energy-wise, and especially with global warming, right? So uh, the narrative of sustainability is very important. And we're going to achieve that through proof of stake. Second uh, high-level goal is the scalability. As I said, gas prices are very high. No one, no one wants uh, to use uh, the Ethereum network because it's so expensive. Unless you are very wealthy, you cannot use this network. Uh, so that's why uh, we still have this uh, high-level goal. And of course, we want to maintain the security of the network, keep it decentralized, censorship, uh, permissionless, uh, and so on. So just a, a quick word about proof of work and versus proof of stake. So proof of work is like uh, it's like miners. I'm sure you're familiar with the concept. You need to have uh, uh, GPUs, power, and, and energy consumption in order to uh, have this consensus mechanism that is proof of work. With proof of stake, um, all you need to do is to invest on Ether and then um, stake it, meaning you put it at the disposal of the network. Uh, and then it's your ether that are being used to make the mining process as, as I would define it. So the energy consumption with proof of stake is going to be reduced by 99.5%. So the sustainability uh, question is not gonna be a problem anymore with proof of stake. In terms of, of the roadmap for um, Ethereum 2.0. So there are several um, steps. First step, which happened in December 2020, is the beacon chain. So the beacon chain is the backbone of the Ethereum network, and it's uh, the it's sorry, it's the technology that is responsible for proof of stake. So it's currently live, but it's not merged onto the network. So the merge what we call the merge is uh, bringing proof of work, uh, erasing proof of work and br bringing proof of stake to the network. And so this is going to happen in Q2, Q3, 2022. So say June, July, August, right? Uh, so this is going to be the first step. Uh, and this is going to leverage the sustainability narrative that I told you about. Second step, which is going to happen probably end of the year, is going to be what we call sharding. And it's going to be scaling the Ethereum network. 
uh, and sharding basically are uh, side chains along the Ethereum network. And the transactions are going to happen on those chains and they are not going to congest the main uh, chain. So they will allow us to scale the network along with uh, also the rollups technology that you may know, uh, Arbitrum Optimism, maybe if you're familiar with this. So end of 2020, beginning of 2023, we will have a scalable and sustainable Ethereum. Um, just a quick word on, on that, technical, technical things, but uh, where we are today, as I said, so we still have the proof of work main chain that is live. We have the beacon chain in parallel, but it's not merged into the system. So it's like a, a test chain. What is going to happen, the merge uh, in, in this summer, I would say, is going to be uh, the executable beacon chain. So we will have proof of stake live onto the network uh, this summer. So it's gonna, it's gonna be a, a, a huge chain already, a huge change, sorry, already. And then end of year, we will have those chard chains. So as I said, there are uh, side chains that are capable of making the transaction and the computation along the, the main chain without congesting it. So yeah, to sum it up, uh, here is the roadmap. Uh, two main goals, sustainability scaling. Uh, Ethereum 2.0 is dead, long live Ethereum. Um, actually, in, in the ecosystem, we, we, we don't say Ethereum 2.0. We say Ethereum because uh, it, the transition is going to be quite smooth and it will be still Ethereum. Uh, and I have a, just a, a point on that specifically. So this is my conclusion slide, actually. So we are building a more durable, sustainable, and easy to use theorem uh, on which creators and developers can continuously innovate. There are four key points, I think, around it. The first one is diversity and openness. Why? Because we are building a LC and scalable network. Um, the proof of stake mechanism is going to distribute the incentives even more. Uh, so nowadays, the miners is a sm small group of people. When proof with proof of stake, it's going to wider the, uh, the the ecosystem and the network and make it more secure. So that is the first point. The second point is the inner energy efficiency. I told you about this. Uh, this is a big narrative, and I think it's going to everyone in the press is going to talk about this. And I'm, I'm quite happy with this. Uh, I don't want blockchain technology to be part of global warming. And so Ethereum is going to be a side uh, of that uh, in, in, in July, August. Third point is uh, transition seamless, meaning um, the, the, net, the, the switch from uh, Ethereum 1 to Ethereum 2 is going to be seamless and the network is not going to be interrupted because of this. So we have a very uh, consistent ecosystem. And fourth point is sound and secure money. So the crypto economics of Ethereum are going to change. And thus, the insurance of Ether is going to be reduced and uh, the security also of Ethereum is going to be stronger, meaning uh, Ethereum becoming what we call ultrasound money, um, meaning it you need you need it to use the system, but that at the same time it's deflationary. So that's why we think uh, it's it's uh, it's a very powerful asset. And that's it. So thank you very much for uh, your uh, your time. And uh, yeah, let's let's keep in touch on LinkedIn if you want. Thank you very much, Benjamin. Let's let's uh, continue with the questions. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe what we can do because we are. Uh, a small committee uh, right now. Um, <clears throat> I guess the people will will uh, will wait for the replay to to, to watch it. Actually, uh, that the beauty of, of replay. Let's let's actually. Uh, I suggest that we we switch on the the mic if you if you would like if you want to to uh, to, to to ask questions directly. Yeah, I see. I see. Alban was joined. Alban, I know you, Alban. <laughs> so uh, let me check how we can do. Uh, tech, tech. So normally you should be uh, able to uh, to activate your your mic on 
if you want to uh, raise questions, ask questions. Maybe one question I, I had uh, in the chat, <laughs> Benjamin, about uh, you know the, the big corporate companies. Um, just if you could explain how you how actually you would explain to to big to major big companies um, who are still in the web too. Yeah. Uh, how would you would you explain them the main issues of web three and, and that is actually not yet too late. It's not too late to step in actually. Yeah, sure. So um, I think the the first questions uh, the first question I would uh, I would ask them is. Um, is it relevant for your company or your industry to leverage blockchain technologies? Uh, in 80% of, the, uh, of the, the cases, people are going to say no, meaning they don't need blockchain technology for their, for their businesses. So it leaves 20% of, the, of the, the people or the businesses that are relevant for blockchain technologies. So that, that is one. Um, the the second question I would I would ask the twenty percent uh, people left would be do you want to build on public or permission blockchain so that's the second question they need to ask with uh, the the advantage uh, of uh, and, and disadvantage of of uh, each application um, I think there is also a huge uh, need for education around blockchain technology and 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 you are you are here for that uh, david so thank you um but yeah there is a there there are lots of misunderstanding around blockchain technologies what are there what what's what's the what are the use cases Absolutely. i think the, the media is is conveying information uh that, are, we that are, are all, all, all trying to 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 raise awareness and edu i mean trying to share knowledge and thank you to sure. you. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think there is a, a really a need uh, for for education. Mm. There is really a need for um, implementation. Mm. Uh, meaning, we need consultants. We need uh, system integrators. We need uh, we need talent. Uh, to be to be honest, uh, for people to help those companies that want to uh, go on on the blockchain and just experiment that, with it. That's a, that's a good transition with the, the next question uh, yeah. regarding recruitment within the consensus and, yeah. and even wider, I would say, what, what do you think about the, the job market in Web3 and what are the recruitment needs today with the, I mean, within the consensus, if you, if you, if you know, maybe. Yeah, so um, I think the, recruit, the recruitment needs in the industry is very competitive. Um, there are a lot of big players, I think, that have been very profitable uh, over the past two years. So uh, I think it's, it really is a war uh, for talent. Um, and, and I'm sure consensus is, is in this war against uh, the Coinbase and the Circle and, and all those big players uh, uh, out there. Uh, Ledger, and I'm not going to mention everyone. Sorry for those I didn't mention. But yeah, there is, re there is really a war for, for talent. Um, so that is one. Um, consensus specifically is recruiting across the board and across the globe uh, in every uh, team, uh, marketing, sales, products, specifically products. And you're talking uh, about the consensus widely? I mean, uh, uh, yeah, uh, global. Mesh yeah. And soft software Inc. And no, I'm speaking about consensus uh, software Inc. Okay. So consensus okay. match, which is the investment arm of consensus. Uh, I don't know, to be honest, okay. uh, but I'm sure they are hiring as well because they are uh, recruiting for their uh, incubated companies. Uh, but Consensus Software Inc., the company I work for, um, really they are recruiting across the board. If you go to consensus.net slash uh, careers, you will see there are like uh, tens of jobs. So yeah, the opportunities are are there. And, and, and what, what, would you, what would you advise to... Uh... To, uh, to to neophytes and people, yeah. I mean, the eternal students we are all uh, to 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 uh, to, uh, to apply and do we need uh, a blockchain skills uh, or at least uh, and what do we need actually yeah to so um, I think what uh, what is very important is blockchain knowledge, and not specifically blockchain skills, but blockchain knowledge. Um, 
if you answer the question, uh, why are you interested in blockchain? And you say, oh, I traded two Bitcoins back in 2017. I, I like it. Uh, you're never, you're never going to get there. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, a bit, a bit, a bit uh, poor answer, I, I guess. Yeah. So you need to be knowledgeable and basically passionate more or less about it. Yeah. Uh, and then you will make it. Second step is you go through me, you send me a message and I can refer you for, to the company. Right. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. The message is, uh, is well, uh, is a pass to the, to the blockchain HEC HC community. And, uh, and it can be, uh, yeah, uh, in whatever roles, uh, business, sure. technical, yeah. whatever. Super, super nice. A question from G Gerhardt. Uh, thanks, Benjamin. Most NFT implementations seem to be focused on entertainment at the moment. Have you, see, have you seen any financial services implementations that leverage NFTs specifically? Uh, to be honest, not yet. Uh, it's true that most NFT use cases are built around entertainment, luxury, gaming. And the, the, the use cases that I see um, will happen in uh, decentralized identity, um, medical records, um, academic credentials, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Financial services, I'm not sure we need NFTs. Uh, to be honest, but maybe because NFT basically they are just ERC 721 mm -hmm. or ERC 1155. So basically, yes, if the business logic uh, is required to have an ERC 721 or an ERC 1155 is required for your financial services application, yes, you will use NFTs, but they are not going to be called NFTs. They are just going to be tokens with specific business logics behind them. Right. Nice. Uh, yeah, Alban, thank you for being here. And, and I didn't see that it was Alban van der So <laughs> nice to see you here. Um, another question uh, regarding the... We, we talk a lot about uh, in this uh, in this 2022 uh, year uh, DAO. Um, what do you think about it? How Ethereum and consensus is uh, positioning uh, within this uh, this new trend? And uh, yeah, but, but yeah. I think it's, it's, so it's 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 um, it's a very young space. Uh, it, it's very difficult to to know where it's headed. Um, uh, so, so basically, uh, what, what is, is a decentralized orga uh, and organization? It's a group of people who have entered into a contract with one another to reach a coordinated goal. This can be uh, any goal, right? Um, the, the main use cases that we've seen lately is uh, about raising money for a specific purpose. Um, the way a DAO distinguishes itself from traditional businesses arrangements is in two big ways. First is it's exclusive online, right? With members rarely, if ever, interacting with each other. And second, they operate with rules and targets informed by blockchain technology. Um, so I think it's really interesting in terms of organization, distribution, governance, but there are many unknowns and, and the implications behind, uh, behind the DAOs is still very unregulated. Um, so we don't know how it's going to work. Um, I think also the governance needs to be done in a proper way. And in the current DAOs that I've seen, it's very difficult for the governance to work properly. Uh, so there is a real need for tooling, actually, uh, for DAOs. So building tools for DAOs to work uh, is, I think, the next step. In terms of consensus, we are exploring the ecosystem, um, but we don't have, uh, for the time being, I think, a product specifically dedicated to DAO. We are just researching the space, and it's very, very, very early. And the, 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 the inflection point where uh, most organizations are going to be built around DAOs is not for tomorrow, <laughs> definitely. Okay, 
Uh, and, and regarding metaverses, uh, there's uh, also there was actually a big hype at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So um, to be honest, I'm not I'm not a big expert on metaverse. Uh, why? Because uh, I I do like the real world. I don't want to be living in the metaverse, to be honest. But um, I think it has the potential to for people to interact with a new ecosystem, with a new world. I think for, uh, again, the use cases that we have mentioned uh, in the NFT space to leverage those assets into a digital world. So of course there are economic um, interest, economic opportunities for many players to leverage the, the metaverse. But in this room, who has been to Decentraland or Sandbox and, you know, been, been really in those worlds using a, uh, a mask, a VR mask and been on the metaverse. I didn't, I didn't do that. Um, it's really early. It's really, uh, and, and so all, all the communication that we see around the metaverse is just uh, PR. When you see Carrefour, they have raised, they have bought uh, a land on the sandbox. It's just PR. And they don't know exactly what they're going to do about it. Uh, but they are, like they house, there are opportunities. But to be honest, I couldn't say what's going to be the metaverse in five years. I don't have the answer to that. I'm sorry. No problem. Thank you for your for your your, your answer. Uh, one maybe one uh, other question. What um, I mean, because you have a really interesting uh, experiences, uh, uh, ex Google. So. Could you maybe a little bit share your your experiences uh, uh, going from I mean the web two to the web three your motivations behind and 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 if you could also share one kind of uh, fun story regarding uh, the web three economy you have uh, crossed? Yes, yeah. so um, I think there is really a shift. I mean, I was reading an article about this, uh, people going from web two to web three, even though it's, it's very wide, large sentence to say, but um, looping back to the, the recruiting aspects and, and the talent chase, uh, I think if you look at products team, for instance, at Coinbase, it's all Google product teams, former Google product teams. So those people are just uh, seeing an opportunity for growth. And I think, so those companies like the Googles, the, the, the Facebook of this world, uh, they are big, big, big corporations. And if you want to, uh, I think, progress in your career, or if you have a, a really big ambition for, for something, uh, could be money, could be uh, learning opportunities, um, Web3 is offering, nowadays is offering more than those companies. So that's why people are leaving. Um, me, I wasn't that interested anymore in the ads uh, industry. I was working in the ads industry at Google and, and for me, it didn't make that sense. Uh, so I wanted to join uh, a company that is really building the decentralized world and consensus is doing, it, and do, is doing this. So that's why I took this opportunity. And it was for me an opportunity also to learn uh, a new ecosystem, a new industry. So that's why I joined. Um, and a, a funny Web3 story, to be honest, I, I, I don't have, I've been, I've been at Consensus for two months, so I don't have a funny story to tell you about. Oh, even uh, before, I mean, it's not regarding even out of Consensus, I would say, but if you have. You know, I, uh, I think we all have stories of people like the, the pizza guy, Laszlo, uh, who, put, uh, <laughs> who had uh, 1,000 Bitcoin and uh, actually he sold it and, uh, you know, he got ruined. And, potentially ruined so i would have stories about this but uh, i don't have a i don't have a funny story to tell but uh, let's meet in six months <laughs> <laughs> you'll come back you'll come back i will i will uh, and and uh, thank you very much for this um, for for your answer a question from uh, srinivas um, regarding the updates on metamask uh, when i mean when and what what interesting updates on metamask will we have uh, uh, yes yeah, so um... To be honest, nothing I can communicate externally. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not even uh, aware of this. Um, I, I could be, I could be looking for information. But uh, an update that I published on LinkedIn, I really like, is uh, you can use your uh, your uh, credit cards, Visa, Mastercard, 
uh, that are stored in your Apple Pay account okay. to buy cryptocurrencies through MetaMask, and then you can store it into MetaMask. I think this uh, this feature is really interesting to build uh, accessibility and awareness of cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. uh, par partnering with with Apple is is really very 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 important. And so, looping back to the the Web two Web three. Um, this world is going to merge, right? So uh, I'm not I'm not going to say Google is dying and Apple is dying. It's not, it's not the case at all. Uh, it's just that uh, those companies are going to live together and they will need each other uh, because on, on the one hand, you have uh, the, the vast majority of people that are using those services, those companies. On the other hand, you have uh, innovation and technology. And, 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 and I think both worlds are going to merge uh, anytime soon. Uh, like the uh, beacon chain and the and the proof of work chain uh, uh, for Ethereum. Nice. It could be a conclusion, but I have one 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 question left. Sure. Maybe if you if you if you have time, I mean we have two minutes more. Um, you probably already uh, talked about it during the, your presentation. Just um, could you maybe uh, elaborate a little bit about the how the, I mean, the, the funds will be, because I mean, it's a huge, huge amount of money uh, which have been raised uh, the full last months by consensus and, and very, I mean, bravo. This is just a big milestone that will come also with the merge and other with, uh, with Ethereum, we don't say the two, 2.0, with Ethereum in general. Uh, what, uh, yeah, could, could you please elaborate a little bit about how the, the funds will be used and what, what, will, what the, the, the three first priorities, uh, next challenge for, for, for consensus? In sure. This, in this story? Um, so, so in terms of the allocation of the funds, uh, I cannot say for sure. And I know in the press, we have announced that uh, a part of those funds, um, a big chunk of those funds, uh, you would need to verify this information, but a part of those funds are going to be transformed into Ethereum uh, because, of course, we have, we have we are big players of, of this ecosystem, so we want to be into this ecosystem uh, and use it for staking purposes. For instance, I mentioned the beacon chain, so we are going to use part of this Ethereum to stake it. In terms of the company priorities, I think it's more interesting. Uh, I think the, the number one priority is to keep uh, recruiting. Uh, the company has great ambition in terms of growth, so everyone is welcome to to join the company because uh, we are growing and we need talent. So this is this is a welcome call for, for from me. Uh, in terms of of priority, I think developing our products is the second priority. Uh, developing our product stack and 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 make it more accessible to anyone, uh, meaning, of course, the developers, as I mentioned, for them to build the decentralized web and the decentralized application and the decentralized ecosystem of tomorrow uh, is something that we need. And of course, on the user side, we need to expand the usage of MetaMask uh, and its key features. So this is something that is uh, priority number two. And that's why we are hiring that many product managers in the team because we are building those products for them to be uh, leaders on the market, which they already are, I think, but uh, it needs to be stronger. And uh, third priority, to be honest, I don't know, but uh, I think would be to build a, a strong company culture since, mm -hmm. you know, the number of, of employees is going to grow like double within the next, uh, say, 12 months. Um, we are a fully decentralized company, so keeping the company culture. To be honest, the, the company culture is really nice, uh, and 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 the decentralized aspect, full remote of it, um, still makes makes it a great culture. Uh, so I think we need to maintain that, uh, and you know, have initiative uh, diversity, inclusion, stuff like that, uh, which is very very pregnant in big companies like Google. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's currently being implemented uh, at consensus and, and we are very motivated by this. Excellent, excellent conclusion. Thank you very much, Benjamin. 